First thing we're going to do, we're going to take our mooring lines, our warps off the cleats with a half turn and make them fast back on the boat. So we're going to set them to slip. We're going to set them to slip, Elizabeth. If you'd like to take off the OXO from there, pass that back up to me on the cleat and we'll make it fast up there. Don't forget, when we leave, we all leave together. Everybody is on the boat at the same time. There's none of this pushing the boat off from the pontoon. We're all on the boat. We release our mooring warps from the boat. When it comes to berthing and unberthing the yacht, the single most important line is this one here, the black one that we've got on Osprey. It's the midship aft spring. This acts like our handbrake. Think of it as a handbrake and holds us in position when we have the engine motoring gently ahead, the rudder over, this is our handbrake and holds us alongside. So it's this one, which is the last rope off. It's also the first rope back on when we come back in. Okay, I think we're ready, guys. It's, uh, all our lines are set to slip. Let's all get on board the boat, get ready to leave. All ready to go now. The engine's on. Time to put the boat now into the holding position where we use the engine motoring ahead nice and gently, putting weight on that black line, the midship aft spring, and that's gonna hold us alongside. So, wheel over away from the pontoon, engine ahead. She's holding alongside nicely now. The only line, the only mooring warp which now has weight on it will be the midship aft spring. I can let go my other lines. Would you like to cast off the stern line? Right, you are. And release the midship forward spring, please. Whilst all this is going on, make sure you're checking a skipper that lines aren't going in the water, because don't forget, we've got that propeller spinning at the moment. We don't want ropes going in and getting entangled with that. Elizabeth, could you release the headline for me, please? We're all ready to leave now. We're just holding the boat alongside with just that one mooring warp, the midship aft spring. The engine's going ahead, wheel's over. She's in the holding position. It's like a handbrake. Think of it as a handbrake. However, before I ask Elizabeth to release that line, I must put the engine into neutral, and she must check that I have put it into neutral. Double check. Sailing's all about double checking and being safe. Okay, Elizabeth, I'm gonna put her into neutral. I'd like you to release that. Release that line now, please. When the line's on board, motor gently out. Look up at the wind. Make sure you know how the wind's gonna affect the boat coming out. Nice and gently. Don't forget, the stern swings the other way. That's going nice. And we're away. Back into the cockpit, ropes and fenders, let's have them all in. This side, the windward side, that's gonna be the safe side. The other side, the leeward side, that's the unsafe side because you've got no room to maneuver down there. So when you're going down an aisle like this, Keep the boat up to the windward side, up to the safe side. The arrow represents the wind, and in my models I've got three main points of sail. There's my close hauled, with my sails pulled in nice and tight. I've got my beam reach, where the wind now is on the beam of the boat, on the very side of the boat, we ease our sails out for that one. We ease them out together, try and keep them parallel. And then we've got our downwind sailing, broad reach to dead run indicated there, where we put our sails right out. The wind is now filling the sails from behind and driving the boat downwind. Points of sail, it's all relevant to the angle that the boat is pointing to the wind. Now, by way of a demonstration, there's our wind there. We talked about the no-go zone. Well, the no-go zone is that 90 degrees, 45 degrees either side of the wind, 90 degrees in total, that you can't sail any yacht into. If you point her into that, the sails are just gonna flap and she's going nowhere other than perhaps backwards. So that's no good to us. When it comes to sailing into the wind, we need to be able to go close hauled, which is where we sail along the edge of the no-go zone. So if we sail like that, with our sails pulled in nice and tight, that's going to be the closest that we can sail to the wind. When we've reached a point where we need to tack and turn the boat through the wind, we turn the boat through the wind. At that point, 
your head to wind, the sails will be flapping, but you'll have enough momentum in the turn to turn the boat onto the next tack, and away you go on the other tack. Moving on to the beam reach. The beam reach is when we've got the wind at right angles to the boat, and she's sailing across like that. When you're out there, have this mental picture in your head as regards where the wind is coming from. Wind awareness is what sailing is all about. You need to know where that wind's coming from in order that you can set the sails to the correct angle to get the best performance from the boat. When you're sailing across the wind, on that beam reach, wind right angles to the direction of the boat, you ease your sails out. Now to start with, keep it simple, just ease the sails out about halfway, but ease both sails out together. Here we go. This little yacht, she's on a starboard tack, it's got the wind blowing over the starboard side, and off she goes on starboard tack. If she turns around and comes back the other way, this time she's got the wind on the port side, blowing over the port side of the boat, she's on port tack. Downwind sailing. Downwind sailing is, as the name implies, when we're sailing away from the wind, when we're sailing downwind. Indication that we have there, there we go. Sailing downwind, we've got ourselves right out, wind filling from, from astern. If you're coming on a broad reach, which is effectively as we've angled across there, the wind will be able to get into the mainsail. It will also be able to fill the jib or the genoa on the same side. If you go to a dead run, and that's when you've got the wind directly behind the boat, then chances are the genoa will collapse because the mainsail is shielding and causing a shadow on the genoa. But if you pull her across to the other side, sheet her in on the other side, get your crew to play with the sheets, get the sail set on the other side, you're going to go goose winged. That's when both sails are out and she's going to go downwind, goose winged. You must, however, have on that mainsail the preventer line rigged. That preventer line, and we'll demonstrate out there how that works, that prevents the accidental jibe, which is the one that can do all the damage both to crew and to the boat. Exist. That's wind awareness. You need to know where the wind's coming from. That's the waves. That's the windex at the top of the mast. You've got to find a way and find out where is the wind coming from. We're now on our way out. Now, from a skipper's point of view, you've got to decide on your sail plan, your sail selection. That says how much sail we're going to have up once we get out onto the breakwater. We've got a nice windy day today. We've checked the weather forecast. They reckon about a force five. What's that, 20 knots worth of wind? Nice stiff breeze. We're not going to go out there with full sail up to start with by any means. If we did that, she's going to be hard pressure, going to be knocked over. Don't want to do that. We want to give everybody a nice ride to start with. So, as we get out in the breakwater, we'll have a look at the conditions. I rather suspect today we'll have a couple of reefs in the mainsail and half a jib, half the Genoa will be out. Let's take a look, let's see what we got. Go for hoist please, pull her up, take a turn around the winch. Up she comes. Okay, that's on. We've got our main sail up, we've got two reefs in the main, keep it nice and easy to start with. We're now going to set our fore sail, the Genoa, it's going to be half a Genoa today, it's going to be a jib today. Okay, we're going to release the furling line, keeping one turn on the winch. That controls the speed that she's going to come out at. And we're going to pull in on the jib sheet. Okay, when you're ready, guys, pull away. Go, 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 go. Got lovely bouncy conditions out here today. So time to introduce the safety lines. Make sure everyone's got a safety line on their harness, just in case they need to leave the cockpit. Keep it all nice and safe. I put the loop over your head. We're all set. Next thing to do, let's do a bit of sailing. Okay, so ever so important on a day like today that you get your sail balance right, that you match the size of your foresail with the size of the mainsail as we've done here today. Well, we're starting to run out of water now. The beach is getting a bit close, so time to put a tack in. So it's ready about? Ready about. Okay. Wheel over. Leo, let it run. Let them off. That's it. In she comes, nice and tight. That's lovely. Well done. Got her sailing nicely now, up to about five knots. Nice sea out here today, so you have to steer the boat nicely through the waves, ease the wheel all the time. If you see a large one coming, ease her up into it a little bit. Always makes the ride a little bit smoother. But keep the boat speed on all the time. Speed is king. You must have the boat powering itself through the water. Sails going to be nice and full like they are now. Nice rounded shape to them, that lovely aerofoil shape that they talk about. 
keep the boat powering through the water. With sailing, it's all about wind awareness. Where is the wind coming from? Well, in the books, you have that lovely page with the arrow on it telling you where the wind's coming from. You may have noticed out here, there's no arrow to tell you where the wind's coming from. So, you've got to find it yourself. The wind, it's the waves that are generated by the wind. Look into it and eventually you start to feel where the wind's coming from. Today it's coming from over there. Various things on the boat will tell me. We've got flags on the boat. At the top of the mast, we've got the wind decks. Main indicator, like a weather vane that is, it points into the wind. So if that's pointing into the wind, the wind has got to be coming that way. When it comes to sailing the boat, we can't stick the bow of the boat into that wind. The sails would just be like a flag. They'll just flap, they won't power the boat forward. We can sail, however, 45 degrees, thereabouts, off the wind. So that's called the edge of the no-go zone. Any further around, you no-go nowhere. So it's the no-go zone. 